The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. Glory be to you. Let us be attentive. The Lord says to the Jews, Amen, Amen, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come to judgment, but has passed from death into life. Amen, Amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will lie, for as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can of myself do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. In the name of the Father, Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory be forever. Dear beloved, today we heard in the Holy Gospel Jesus saying, Who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come to judgment, but has passed from death into life. Each of us is created by love, and for love in this world, loving God plants seeds of love, hope and faith in our hearts. And our task is to take care of these seeds. We know that for a good harvest we have to take care of plants. No plant can grow without water, light, warmth, soil and other things. When we plant them with love and care for them, then we receive good fruits. Likewise, our souls need food, and our loving God provides all we need. He wants us to be saved. He left for us the Church with holy sacraments, commandments, and divine liturgy. In this Church filled with God's presence, we start, continue, and finish our life. God always gives us all that we need. His hands are never empty. He is waiting for us every moment of our lives, but without our cooperation, He does not do anything because He respects our choice. Every morning, when we open our eyes, let us be thankful for a new life. Do not be afraid to live on this day because our loving God is present there. Let us do all our jobs without complaint do them with love. Do it not for salary or price, but let's do it with love for our God. Then we will not be disappointed, because God never remains in debt. Our good actions will be deposited on our heavenly account, and when God calls us, we will be able to stay in front of Him with our hands filled with good deeds. Let us not put off our life for another day. Life now and this moment, as Apostle Paul said, now is the time of God's favor, now is the day of salvation. Let's please the Lord with our lives, lives that sometimes are filled with distrust, unhappiness, disappointment, heavy sins, and even with broken hearts. Our God will not refuse us. He is refuge for all of us. He loves us, and we are called by Him to share this love. Again, Apostle Paul says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. We have to remember 
that the heavenly kingdom begins in our earthly life, at the moment when we start to live with God, when we put our whole life in Him. When we live that way, we will not be afraid of death, as for us it means return to our heavenly house, to our loving God. Today, we are gathered in this earthly Church of God to accompany the soul of the servant of God Helen with our prayers to the cemetery. And as Christians, we know that with the second coming of the Lord, all bodies will have risen in the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, the soul of the servant of God Helen is in front of God to report about her earthly life. She will be able to stand in front of Him with her hands filled with good deeds, stories of her days when she lifted her voice to praise God while singing in the cathedral choir and her generosity in supporting the cathedral financially. But even with all these good deeds, she still needs our prayers, confession, for us to live a godly life by keeping God's commandments. Why? Because we are a big family. We are one body. When one part of the body is thick, sick, then the whole body aches. When one part of the body is healing, then entire body heals. And remember that the best gift for our souls is our life with God. Today, we do not say goodbye to the servant of God, Helen, but only say until we meet again. <coughs> Helen is already at home and we are on our way. Dear family and friends of Helen, on behalf of the clergy and parish, I wish to offer our heartfelt condolences. May Almighty God give repose to the soul of the servant Helen and give us love healthy and peaceful life.